Hello, hello. Um, I'm here gonna give you guys a breakdown of what I've done to my 2011 Ford Ranger since I've owned it and um, also just do kind of a long-term review of the truck and how it's held up. Uh, so like I said, this is a 2011 Ford Ranger XL uh, 2.3 liter motor with the five-speed manual transmission. Give you a quick walk around. Um, let me just talk about some exterior things I've done to uh, the truck so far. Got a list here I can run through so I don't lose track and miss anything. But, um, okay, first off is the jet chip power module. Um, so if you don't know, this truck doesn't have a lot of power. Uh, it's got a 2.3 liter four cylinder. So it's kind of lacking in that, in that area, which is probably one of the only downsides to this truck. But, so the power mod is right here. Uh, I don't, I can't say if it does add power or not, but um, it's probably the only thing I can do with this engine to boost its horsepower and so I went for it when I first got it, it was about 200 bucks I think, it wasn't cheap. <clears throat> but um, it's there, I don't know if it does anything. But uh, yeah, what else do I have on here? Rear spring helpers. So the rear leafs are kind of weak on this truck, it's a three pack with a with a overload spring. And so I got these. Yeah, there they are. Uh, I forgot the exact name of these, but uh, they're designed to help the Leafs when it's over or when it's loaded. Not, um, it, you don't have to have a huge amount of weight in the bed for them to start working. They're designed to sit on the actual axle and uh, absorb the bumps and all that, uh, and stop your your Leafs from sagging too much. Uh, and I really like them a lot. I work construction with this truck. For a long time, and uh, they really stabilize the truck once once it's sitting on the axle. I also have a K9 air filter, just standard stock replacement air filter that helps with uh, a little more power gains. Um, I have a Flowmaster 30 exhaust, just a direct um, cut out the old muffler and install the new. Here it is. It's seen. It's uh, it's it's on its way out. I think uh, it's got some loose, rattly parts in it that kind of make a buzzing sound at a certain RPM. Uh, so I'm gonna swap that out for something soon. Uh, modified exhaust tip location. Yes. So I don't like the standard exhaust tip coming out the side on these trucks. So I had it kind of chopped back here and uh, enlarged give it that kind of uh, echoey throat sound uh, and, and it's worked really nice. It's very clean from the back. You can't see any exhaust tips hanging out. I like it a lot. Um, LED lighting all around. So yeah, I recently replaced all lights, front, rear, everywhere, top as well, to um, LED. Much, much better than stock, especially the headlights. Those are a night and day difference. Um, um, so yeah, I definitely recommend. The only issue with these is you need the LED flasher replacement, the relay flasher, which is under the dash. I did that. And also the rear taillights on this truck are what's called an all-in-one, meaning they do your hazards, your brakes, and your turn signals, and your daylight, day, the nighttime running lights all in one bulb. And so you're not gonna find an LED bulb that will work for those scenarios. So these bulbs I found on Amazon <clears throat> were my second try. And although when the only issue is when you have your headlights on, the the rear uh, brake lights will act as nighttime running lights, so they'll be half bright, you know, half on. And then when you press, when you use the turn signal, the turn signal is so weak that you can barely see it flashing. The first set of LEDs I got 
you could not tell that they were flashing at all, so I tossed those in. Then I, these you can kind of tell at night when they're flashing, uh, which is kind of a bummer, but there's really no getting around it um, with this with this type of configuration. Uh, what's up next? Aluminum wheels. I just I just got these. Uh, what are they? Procomp. Yeah, Procomp uh, aluminum wheels from Summit Racing. I drove this truck from California to North Carolina, and I needed to replace my uh, steel stamped wheels that were really uh, out of balance because uh, I just don't want to have the steering wheel vibrate and wobble the entire trip. Uh, so these things have been very, very nice, super true, balanced, uh, and 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 took took care of all the wobble. Um, so these are so next up is the Falcon wild peak tires i absolutely love these tires this is my second set um they're just very cost efficient good looking capable tire uh you really can't find anything better for the price uh and they just look really really nice what's what's next here hella horns so i replaced the stock horn um at, 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 the stock horn is fine on these trucks i don't know why i replaced it with a with an autozone cheap uh, loud horn that kind of gave out and so I just bought these Hella horns they're kind of they're uh, they're meant for Subarus really but they work fine in here uh, just direct wire up uh, dual tone and uh, they're very loud and, and they're nice what's next the tailgate lock so yeah pop lock makes a lock for this truck like I said I used to do construction so I had a ton of cover on here at one point and uh, I really needed to lock the bed so this pop lock is supposed to work with the stock plastic handle, uh, but that broke on me, and so I replaced it with this metal handle. But the pop lock doesn't work with this type of handle, so it had to be modified. So I modified that myself, and uh, it works great. Can't complain. Craftsman bed box. Uh, this is a it was Lowe's or Home Depot. I got this at. I love this box because it's low profile, just barely sits above the rear window as you can see here it doesn't impede any rear view uh, visibility and uh, holds a lot of stuff it's made of aluminum kind of thin but if you take care of it uh, you shouldn't have any issues uh, so yeah I added the tie downs inside the truck I've got three on each side you can't see the the others because of the box but very handy uh, Raptor lined the bed myself just buy a kit on Amazon. If you have an air compressor, you can do this in your garage. Scuff down the truck bed with some with some uh, Scotch Brite, and uh, yeah, Raptor lined it myself. It held up great. I used this truck for about five years working construction, beat the shit out of it, uh, and just a, it's just peeling up in a few areas, like here where I didn't do a lot of. Uh, I should have sanded more, but yeah, it's held up nice. Um, <clears throat> so some things you can't see, brakes, I have EBC yellow pads on the front <clears throat> for the road trip, I wanted something very high performance and they did the trick, uh, great pads. Um, I have also a nice set of high-end Bosch Schroders on the front uh, to replace the warped stock ones, uh, they've been doing great. I have uh, slotted rear rotors on the rear. Just to add a little bit more stopping power, the the truck has no no problem locking up all fours uh, in a hard braking situation. So that's one thing I have to say about this truck: it's very good brakes, so it doesn't really need much. Um, I've also replaced shocks all around to Bilstein's. When I first got the truck, the stock ones were shot, and um, so yeah, did that a while ago. And then something I did recently was uh, ceramic coated the plastics front and rear. So you can tell, as you can tell, they look like brand new. I used a product called Cerakot, which is really, really a good product. Um, you can tell. I did the mirrors here, handles, even all the lights brought this thing back to new. It was very dull and faded. And then uh, also, as you can tell, the window tint. So I think it's five, 
5% on the rear and then 20s on the front. Um, I think it's a must have for this truck. Makes it really pop. <clears throat> All right, let me close this up here. Another uh, exterior mod you'd want to do on these trucks is a blind spot um, mirror like this here. Uh, it kind of has a big B pillar back here. Uh, and sometimes you, there's cars in that spot when you try to merge that you really can't see. Uh, I got one on the other side as well. These are from Amazon, work fantastic, and they kind of blend in real nice. They don't have a black border, which kind of distracts from your, uh, from the looking in your rearview mirror. I also have a um, dash cam, hardwired, and a radar detector, hardwired. So. All the wiring stuck up in these head liner and then down the A pillars. All right, moving on to the interior here. Um, starting off are the seat covers. These are just some basic Amazon seat covers, but they they wrap the stock, uh, the factory cloth seats very well and are very secure. They don't shift around, which uh, is really nice if if you've ever had seat covers. You know how they like to move around. Um, next up is something you can't really tell, uh, but the entire interior is sound deadened. So I removed the entire interior, uh, lifted up the carpet <coughs> or the uh, floor mat, and the entire uh, floor, ceiling, back, and doors are has sound mat, sound deadening inside them. Uh, I did this for the, my cross country trip and it helped tremendously with road noise, vibration, and, and all that. It made a very pleasant drive. Um, next up is cup holders from an automatic uh, XL truck. Uh, the manual doesn't come with these because once you, if you have a short driver, they have to scoot the seat up, and then uh, that interfere, the cup holder interferes with the shifter. Um, but if, you're, if you have your seat back uh, and are a tall driver, there's no issue. You can have tall drinks in here, and uh, you won't have a problem. Next up, shift knob. I replaced stocked plastic shift knob with just a black billet aluminum shifter. Got a little adapter down here, as you can tell, slip, slips on the stock shift shaft, shifter shaft, uh, and yeah, no issues. Looks stock and feels very, very nice. The weighted shifter helps with uh, with shifter feel, and it's just a. Uh, a good combination. Um, next up, if you can't tell, I have a different head unit in stock. This is an Atoto from uh, bought it off Amazon. Works really well. It's an Android head unit. Has Bluetooth, YouTube. It's pretty much a mini tablet in your car. Uh, it's, it's been good. Next up is the sound. Let me go around. I'm very into sound quality and, um, and music, so a good sound system is very important to me. So I went with a kicker uh, powered sub. Um, this is a very shallow version, as you can tell. It's tiny. Uh, it really gives music some good depth. It's not crazy bassy. Obviously, it's a very shallow sub, but it does the trick for the small truck, and uh, you really don't need anything more unless you're trying to uh, compete in, in some competitions. Um, and then I also have the Soundstream 4 channel mini amp over here. It's um, hooked up to my uh, four speakers, so it's 100 watts per channel, which is probably the, the most power you can get out of something this small. Uh, it's extremely loud and does very well. I have kicker uh, components here. I've got the tweeters up here on the A pillars. Um, uh, these are very nice speakers. They handle the power very well, and I have a set of six by eight Alpines in, in the rear here. Um, coaxial speakers. They work really nice. Uh, tough to hear with the seats back, but um, they definitely add volume to the system. Put this back. <clears throat> what else do I have? Uh, 
So, so okay, come on. Okay, I have a fire extinguisher back here if you couldn't see, just in case. It's always a good thing to have. And then I also have a backup camera. Right here, it's, an, it's the same brand, Atoto. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but yeah, it's uh, good to have when you're backing up in tight spaces. And just want to crowd, crowd the rear bumper. All right, let's move on to the things I've had to repair on this truck. Um, so one thing I did have to do is replace the front wheel bearings. They weren't actually that bad. It was because of the uh, old wheels I had that were really out of balance. They kind of screwed up the wheel bearings, so that's an easy job. You can do it in probably 30 minutes. Um, so I did that a couple times just to uh, get rid of that wobble in the steering wheel uh, like I said brakes all around that's a maintenance thing you gotta do it either way uh, I had I replaced the tie rod joint on the left front tire wheel here um, I hit a curb on a f uh, pretty hard one night and I think I, I screwed up that joint uh, so I had that replaced um, serpentine belt I replaced spark plugs I replaced uh, I got a new fuel cap with a cord on it because it's something like how the stock cap had the cord broken or missing so this is good um it's nice and tidy you don't forget that cap and just drive away um and then the exhaust hanger fell off of the uh, flowmaster exhaust the welding shop wasn't that great when they did the work <coughs> and so that's something i had to re have rewelded on and the clutch, I've replaced the clutch in this probably three times. Once myself, once uh, my uncle's auto shop did it, it completely was worn out. I didn't really notice until it got me stranded on the road. Um, and then a third time, just recently before the big road trip, just because the pilot bearing was gone, uh, and I just decided to replace the clutch while we're in there anyways. Uh, one thing to note, you will want to replace the slave uh, slave master cylinder for the clutch every time you replace the clutch on these because it's uh, it's a different crappy design where you really can't get to the slave cylinder uh, unless you remove the transmission. <clears throat> so you really want to get that replaced every time you replace the clutch. It's not that expensive, about 50 bucks in, a, in parts. And then I've also replaced the clutch master cylinder, which is right at the clutch pedal in here uh, twice, once myself and once when I had the clutch replaced the uh, last time. Just because the one I put in from AutoZone was kind of sloppy and uh, I didn't really like the way it felt. So I had them put in an OEM, an OEM one. The one other thing I'd like to mention on here on this truck that's uh, gone bad is the uh, valve cover gasket. Uh, it's leaking a little bit, uh, not enough to make me want to replace it it's just a pain in the ass to get to and uh, it's one thing to to watch out for if you have one of these trucks and uh honestly that's the only issues i've ever had with this truck it's been fantastic daily driver fantastic construction vehicle uh fantastic road trip vehicle i've driven this thing for, you know 11 hours from the bay area down to uh 29 palms and palm springs and i've, I've driven it almost 4,000 miles across the country um, it's been fantastic, never given me any issues. I even hit a deer with it, uh, replaced the front grille. That's why the front emblem is black instead of blue. Um, <clears throat> I've hit an another deer on this side. You can see the little bumps and dents here. That was on a road trip. Deer kind of just smashed into me. Um, so that's held up. I, I did hit a low-hanging branch at one of my construction sites here just kind of spray painted over uh, it's a construction vehicle it's meant to be used or it's a you know it's a truck it's meant to be used I don't mind a little dance here and there um, yeah if you're thinking about I, I think this truck has 145,000 miles on it so far if you're in the market for an old Ranger uh, I would not hesitate to grab one up um, they're really sought after these days, and uh, you, they're not that cheap, honestly. 
Uh, but if you can get your hands on one, I suggest you do and uh, hold on to it. So yeah, it's just a video diary of my Ranger and what I've done to it so far. Um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, enjoy your day. Thank you.